It's here. Today is collection day of my brand new Ferrari Puro Sangue. Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today we're picking up one of the most anticipated Ferraris of modern times, the new Shmi Mobile, for which I've not even yet revealed to you guys the spec that I've chosen. But we're going to be heading over to HRN Ferrari with my current two Ferraris, the SF90 Stradale and the 296 GTS, to go and pick up the SUV that's not the SUV. We're going to be revealing the car, running through the spec I've chosen, bringing it for the first drive back here to the Schmuseum before diving into more of the options and how much it all cost a little bit later on. This is one I cannot wait for. Let's get ready, let's get set, let's get on the move, go pick up the Pura Sangue, one of the first in the entire world, the new Schmimobile. <laughs> I am super lucky that my car is such an early Pura Sangue and that's partly down to what I've had before. My first Ferrari was an FF that I absolutely loved in Blue Le Mans. I drove tens of thousands of miles between that and then the two GTC 4 Lussos. The first in Blue TDF, Tour de France Blue, the second in Blue Potsy. And between those three cars, which were the predecessor, you could say, to the Pura Sangue, I drove on trips to Ikea. We went skiing in the mountains, even driving laps of the Nürburgring Nordschleife and so much more. Which brings us to the current two Ferraris in the collection. After my second Lasso, my first ever brand new Ferrari, the Blue Electrico SF90 Stradale. I've driven nearly 10,000 miles with that thing, followed recently by the Rosso Dino 296 GTS, which I've only owned a minute and barely even driven yet. Now, amongst the three cars, we've got a V6, a V8, and missing a V12, we've got a coupe, we've got a spider, we're missing something practical, you can see where the Pura Sangue fits in. When it comes to plates, I always try and make a fun nod. The 60, because the 296 links to the original Dino from the 60s. On the SF90, this is a stretch I know, we've got a two because of the two different deliveries of power, electric and combustion engine. But for the Pura Sangue, to show you what we've got here, if you might be able to guess it, 65 to celebrate the 6.5 litre naturally aspirated V12 with a quote from one Mr. Enzo Ferrari, aerodynamics are for people who can't build engines. I can't wait for the 12 cylinder sound of this car later today. Let's address the elephant in the room and what's going on over here. Now, as you know, the Schmuseum is on a farm here in England. This building used to be a milking parlor. It was home to cattle before it was the home of horsepower. We then introduced our Schmi 150 mascot, Schmu the cow who is back bigger and better than ever before and with that I'm delighted to say he's also back in stock right now in the Shmi 150 eBay shop. The new look Shmoo the cow has his home on his paw, he's got the swing tag with hi guys I'm Shmoo, the familiar colorway. Last time around these sold out in about half an hour so grab one while you still can. Not only that also over here we have introduced air fresheners, we've got a few different designs going on, we've got Moo High, we've got race time and we've also got say cheese these are available as a triple pack with plenty of other things in the shop too including the edition one sticker sheet with plenty of different poses by schmoo the cow so what are you waiting for check those out over on ebay grab yourself a schmoo the cow but for us now i think it's time to get moving now, one of the quirks of the car having arrived while I've been in the United States is that it meant we've had some time for it to already go to Topaz Detailing for full paint protection film to be installed. So just like with the SF90 and the 296 GTS, it's gone from the dealership to Topaz for full coverage to make sure the film is installed correctly using the latest state-of-the-art templates and facilities that Topaz have available. That helps with stone chipping, with any potential damage, keeping the car looking amazing, protecting the paint work underneath the film. Something I always recommend, especially with a car like the Pura Sangue, which is in a stunning paint color that you're yet to see, and one that I know I'm going to drive a lot of miles with. This is something to use, to enjoy, to get out there with, to take on road trips, to use for lugging stuff around, taking people around, all sorts of different things. But I think we should probably pull out both of these, go get started, and head over to HRON Ferrari, the dealership in Hatfield, to collect my Pura Sangue. <laughs> This is the first time we've done this with these two cars together on the road. The first time I've ever seen my 296 GTS being driven. It literally has 
about 150 miles on it at the moment. I took delivery, went to the US, the Puro arrived, it's all happening at the same time. I've driven with this car and with the Lusso many miles together, many amazing miles, taking the Lusso all the way down to Maranello for collection of this nearly two years ago now, but obviously that is in its infancy. There are gonna be many fun things ahead with the 296, just these cars together as I drop some gears, get the V8 rolling. Just an epic, epic pairing. <laughs> this is so cool to be driving with them together to the dealer. We are about one mile away. We've got the 296 in the mirror. How cool is that? And of course, we also, for the journey, have Shmoo the cow with us, whose colors are very akin to this particular car. It has to be said. Anyway, nearly there. Well, here we are. HRON Ferrari Hatfield, the sister dealership to where I've ordered this car. Plenty of Ferraris outside. Oh, I've got to stop saying the name. I always say the name of this brand from Marinello and it kicks off the voice recognition, which is quite funny, but not ideal. Anyway, I think, oh, there's a LaFerrari in the showroom. Instantly jealous. I think if we go all the way around towards the Handover Bay, probably, probably just inside here, under that cover, <laughs> It's right there, in this showroom window. That's it. That's my Pura Sangue. Let's park this up, go inside, and go get ready for this. There is a lot to come and see here, outside and in, but I realize at this point in time, you guys don't know what color this new car is. Red, blue, yellow, green, purple, orange, something wacky, or perhaps, as it is in my opinion, the most perfect spec for a Pura Sangue. Come on in, here where we collected the 296 GTS recently and come straight over to take a look at some of the cars here in the showroom. Past the 812 Superfast for a moment, past this, which we're gonna come back to, because here at the end, by the Christmas tree, on the turntable, is a LaFerrari. This car has 150 miles, 6.3 V12, hybrid hypercar, iconic, looks incredible, but I didn't come shopping today for a 458 Speciale, but I tell you what, Look at this example, Grigio Ingrid over the blue Medio Alcantara interior with the matching stripe. That's really nice. Anyway, 812 Superfast, you know how much I love those. We are coming straight past this way because down here, well, let's beeline past the cars that are on display at the moment. Giallo Triplo Strato, big fan of that color on the 296 GTB. We've then got a 488 Spider, F8 Spider, Roma down towards the end. That's also Giallo Triplo Strato, but we're coming straight through because you know what's waiting through there? Come on with me. Let's go and take a look at this. Here it is. I'm standing next to my Pura Sangue. This is quite an unusual shape for a new Ferrari. But let's talk color for a moment because I mentioned earlier, this is a spec I've gone for that has a link to the past, that has a link back to my Ferrari past. And in particular, the color of the paint, the wheels and the brakes. Let me show you what I've gone for for the paint of this car, this is Blue Le Mans. Blue Le Mans is a stunning historic Ferrari paint color. It is the same color as my original FF. That's not all though, come round because look at the wheels that we've got here. Bright silver with red calipers. Again, this is a tribute to the FF. This is a tribute to what was my first Ferrari on the first Ferrari FUV, Ferrari utility vehicle. It's kind of an SUV, but it's not because the engine, as we're gonna see when we pop open the hood, the bonnet is behind the front wheels. So I think we should probably do this. I think it's probably time to pull this cover back and reveal to you guys my Pura Sangue. Let's do this, jumper off. It is time to reveal this car. Although I tell you what, it's quite a bit bigger than the last car I pulled the cover off in this showroom, the GTS, more like this kind of thing but this is the first four-door Ferrari. This is my Pura Sangue. So ladies and gentlemen, let me disappear behind the car to reveal to you my Ferrari Pura Sangue in blue Le Mans. This thing is epic. The spec, if I can say so myself, is insane. This paint color, just wait until you see it out in the sunshine. As well as all of the silver wheels and the red calipers, we've got the full exterior carbon fiber, these wheel arch surrounds, skirts, bumper, diffuser, but wait for the interior because I am very proud of this interior specification. Take a look 
at the dual tone in Koyo, the tan leather, with the blue sterling for the upper dash, the steering wheel, all the blue carpets as well, and the footwells, the stitching, the embroideries. For the rear, if we open the motorized rear doors, these suicide doors hinged from the back, we've got exactly the same finish and quality in there, a very high specification. If we look up, we also have the panoramic glass for the full roof, which looks amazing. That's electrochromatic, you can change it. Obviously, the motorized doors can be closed again as well, but this is the most practical car that Ferrari have done, and we need to talk about the engine. Let me pop open the bonnet, which actually hinges from the front. We also have soft close on the doors, but this opens, pivoted from the nose, and there we have the six and a half liter, naturally aspirated V12 power plant, the beating heart of the Pura Sangue. That is a big part of what this is about. And we're gonna have a startup shortly, and it's gonna sound amazing. It still auto locks, but this, I could not be happier with what this looks like. The sun has just tucked away, but even in the normal light that we have here, this color is phenomenal. It is such a nice blue. It reminds me, obviously, instantly of the original FF. In fact, I stuck with blue Ferraris from number one all the way through to my fourth, the SF90, before the massive curveball of going Rosso Dino on the 296 GTS. But I think it suits that shape really, really well. We've actually got all three then together here, the matching plates, the matching Ferraris to be taken back to the Schmuseum. But I need to show you a few more things about this because it's effectively an all new car to learn. The 296 shared so many things with the SF90 that I basically knew what I was doing straight away. And here we've got the new infotainment. We've got this rotary controller where you press here, it pops out and that's where you select all the seat settings, for example. Obviously we've got these rear doors and I kind of want to be driven at some point in the back of it to experience what that's going to be like because they're pretty supportive, comfortable buckets back there. And we haven't actually gone round towards the rear of the thing. Look at the design of this. I really like the way this thing looks from the back, so much presence, massive diffuser, the horizontal lines to accentuate the width, the new style of the tail lights as we've seen on some of the other models. I've gone for the silver tailpipes to match the wheels and some of the interior details. Of course, we've got a ton of boot space back here as well. Press the button. Of course, it is motorized. It comes supplied with the Ferrari car cover. We've got the tool that you use to open the key. We've then got the smart charger that it comes with as well. There's even storage space underneath here. We'll have a full induction at some point soon to start understanding everything about the car and go through all of the details. But yes, this is absolutely mega. So let me come around and take a seat in the driver's seat to give you this perspective and view on it. Let me take the keys out of my pocket. I've got both of them here. You get the second key with the grey back and the primary key, which has the yellow Ferrari badge on it. Love those. Step inside. We've got all of the films that need to be removed from the main screen, from the passenger screen as well. Let me just wake this up for a moment. We've got this, as I mentioned, this rotary toggle. Look how you control this. Temperature. This is really, really smooth. Everything is very nice. Just at the moment wanting to play and press buttons and see how it all works and what we've got and how all of this plays together. Look at this. I cannot wait to get this started. The blue and the tan. Oh, this is lovely. This is so nice. We've got the electrochromic roof. In fact, the button for that is this. You press that and it changes. It's going clear right now as I watch it, or you can put it back to being the tinted style as well. Oh boy, there's gonna be a lot of fun ahead with the Pura Sangue. One interesting thing here, when you change the Manatino setting, you can actually hear the exhaust valve clicking, but I suppose what we need to do is hit the magic button and take a listen to the V12. So head round back, let's fire it up. <laughs> Well, how about that for a view? We just pulled out the Pura Sangue and parked the three in a row. That is totally crazy. What I was saying earlier, Spider, Coupe, kind of SUV, V6, V8, V12. The two blues I know with the one red slash orange, but look at these together. That is pinch moment and a half. I never thought that one of these might happen, let alone the little lineup of Ferraris in the collection obviously with dreams of joining the Ferrari Collector Club in the future with more cars coming like the Roma Spider that I've announced as well. But this, 
Oh, this is just absolutely crazy right now. I wish the sun was out in force so you could see this paint color, the way it has that pearlescent blue tint to it. You'll see down the line. But the interior in Koyo, I've never done a Koyo interior before. I've had Crema on the FF, Sabia, of course, as we have here on the SF90 with the dual tone, and then did Grigio Scuro with the charcoal that you see here in the 296. I love the dual tone Ferrari interiors, just playing with the different options, the stitching. And you know, here we've got the blue stitch, we've got the blue Cavallino, the embroidered prancing horse up on the top of the headrest. But it's, it's autumn or winter and it's getting very cold outside right now. This is crazy, but I think we should gear up to get ready for the first drive. The first drive in the Puro. And bang on cue, the sun just popped out. Look at that colour. Look at it with the sun bouncing off it. That is awesome. In fact, look at all three with the sun now on them, making sure I don't trip up here in the process. Ah, oh, so cool. Especially with the sun actually through to the Koyo. Nice. Very, very nice. It's time to head home, unsurprisingly. The roof is going up on the 296 GTS, but this is a lot to learn in a very short period of time. So uh, give me a second and then we'll roll out. Let's do this then. First drive in my Pura Sangue. Not the first time I've driven one. And amusingly, that is the HRON demo Pura Sangue that's there as well. They come along like buses, right? We've got one, there's another, but this is all learning process, taking it slow, steady, and easily at first, because I feel like just overwhelmed with almost everything that's happening at once right at this moment in time, but the sun is out. It is a beautiful day to be driving a new car like this. Off we go. That engine sound, even at just super low revs like this in the background. Oh, this instantly feels so good it feels super premium high-end fancy as we go past oh a nice purple aston over there and all of the mclarens but hey we are rolling with the ferraris today <laughs> this is ridiculous this is absolutely ridiculous it's here we're finally in it we are driving in this thing heading back towards base it all makes new sounds as well. Okay, not the indicators, they're familiar, but all the different beeps and warnings and things are all unfamiliar. They've all changed. This is where I've had a couple of Porsches from in the past. No Porsches right now though, but it's about enjoying this. So let's head to, I mean, we've got to do the running in, so we have to follow that to make sure that for the long term, this car's going to be good because I'm going to keep this for quite a while but maybe we can have a little bit of fun in a certain famous tunnel. Of course we're running in, but let's just drop it to second gear for a moment. Use a few of the revs. Oh, it sounds just like an 812. I mean, it is the 6.5 litre V12. We've got a 12 cylinder engine back in the Schmiemobiles on a beautifully sunny day. This is a good time. Now, one of the strange things is having rear window buttons, but let me just drop some gears. We can't use many revs. <laughs> Even just that. <laughs> the funny thing is that the 296 is also still running in, right? <laughs> it's such a strange position to be in, to have two brand new cars. That thing looks so good. I love how there are design similarities like the tail lights and some of the elements that are around there that match between the two. But a, a strange thing, having two new Ferraris to enjoy. Oh God, it's sunny. <laughs> At the same time, with a lot to learn about both. And believe me, when both are properly run in, we're gonna be back there and we're gonna be having a whole lot of fun through that tunnel. For now though, I think we're gonna be taking both of these back to base, kind of having a recap, because I need to tell you so much more about the spec and what I've done with this. We're home. The Pura Sangue has arrived. It feels like waiting for this moment of this car being here has been a couple of years now, but it's arrived. Ferrari number six, which is mind boggling. The third that's here at the moment. And yes, we've kind of just staggered the cars, however they've ended up. There's a lot we need to move around and shuffle around. 
but this is completely, completely surreal. I want to show you a few more of the options and the things with this, not necessarily full every single detail, but run over it, overview. We've got the two layer paint, which is part of the historic paint colors. You can choose so many different colors these days, Atelier ta Tailor Made, do different painted liveries, but I wanted to keep it fairly elegant, smart, and I think the result of this has actually worked out very well. Obviously, all of the carbon fiber, the inlays here at the front, the lower, blades around there, the wheelhouse flares as they're actually called around. We've got the Scuderia shields, an absolute must. I think on the bigger Ferraris, you can get away with the painted, the hand painted shields. I don't really like those so much on the smaller mid-engined cars. On the big cars you can, but it didn't seem right for this to me. This is like a tribute to my original, the OG. Come further around, obviously the carbon skirt, again, wheelhouse back here, the diffuser, the sport exhaust tailpipes, we've got back here as well. In fact, of course, because Ferrari, when you pop this open in the boot, we have the full personalization specifications. I'm sorry, it's very dark down here, but the plaque, which tells you everything about this specific car. Um, if you can just about make out any of that, but there are plenty of other options as well on top. One of the big things that I've barely spoken about is the sound system in here, which is amazing. Things like having this in Koyo on the parcel shelf back here. I think this probably opens up. I actually need to learn how it all works. I mean, even the fact that from the controls here, you can fold those seats forwards and backwards. I need a whole lot of learning, basically an induction tour myself um, to figure every single thing out about this. So sport tailpipes, we've got the active matrix LED headlights up front, inside, obviously loads of different options. And in fact, some things that I'm a little bit surprised by that are done differently. For example, on the steering wheel, I have the full carbon fiber LED driver zone, which I always love to spec, shift lights up top. Normally that bottom piece would be in carbon as it is on the 296 and the SF90, whereas on here it's silver, which matches with the H-pad controller for the eight-speed gearbox and some of these other silver details that you have throughout, which again, link to the wheels. And I have like the silver dedication plaque, which I think the dedication plate, which is in the boot, in the boot, it's between the seats back here. That's actually an option. So there's a small silver plaque in the middle, which is a, an option to choose to have as well. There are so many little details and it takes a lot of thinking and planning to try and pull all of this together because even down to like the contrast stitch color to have this in the navy blue to match with the colors that you have around and similarly the headrest embroidery as well you want to make sure they are the exact match when it comes to the roof the panoramic glass roof was an option that would normally be i think it's just carbon by default which is cool don't get me wrong but one of the most exciting things about the lusso for me was always having the glass roof so it was kind of a must to order that on this car as well. We've got technical options. You have wireless charging pads. The lift system is interesting. This was really confusing to me. So the standard car has a lift system anyway, but it's a lift system that only works at very slow speeds, a small amount. So it goes up, I don't know whether it's two centimeters or whatever it is, and up to about 20 miles an hour. There's an optional lift system which goes up significantly further, I think maybe another five centimeters, and can hold that driving up to like 80 miles an hour. So you could go down a dirt road or across some snow, actually driving with it lifted significantly more than it is by standard. Now in my pocket, with the car just locking itself then, this is kind of funny, we've got Ferrari key, Ferrari key. Hey, there's ever so slightly different colors. That's interesting. Three Ferrari keys. I'm gonna guess because that's the lighter one. That must be the SF90. Bingo. So clearly they changed ever so slightly. 296 and Pura Sangue. It's quite nerdy, but fun that it tells you which key is which on the bottom, rather than just being all like black plastic flop fobs that you'd normally have and don't have a clue which car is which. So this is going to get a ton of usage. I've got a lot of plans with it ahead. I just feel like I've got so much to learn right now. One of my favorite things about it with the color in here, the color is just beautiful. Like this depth that it has, the bright highlights when you get the lights bouncing off it on some of the shapes and then they kind of fall into the shadows. But then looking through to the interior and that dual tone with the blue dashboard and the Koyo. I've never had Koyo on a car and I think it's superb for this. It fits this so well. So yeah, very happy about this one. Very happy to have this home. We've got to try something. And to do this, I need to pop this seat down and back a bit passenger seat. You might be able to figure out already what I'm about to try. I'm going to grab Big Schmoo 
um, and see if he can fit in Schmoother Cow. We've got these ones I need to be a little bit careful with. I don't want them to go everywhere and see if I can grab this guy. He's quite heavy. Whoa, don't fall over there, Schmoother Cow. Come on. All right. Oi. <laughs> Who ever thought that on the Schmi 150 channel, I would be carrying a gigantic soft toy across my garage, but he's very cool. So let me see if he can fit in here. Come on, in you go, in you go. <laughs> it's a bit of a squeeze. Oh no, I think he's too big. Let me try, let me try. Oh, he's on the sun visor. There you go, under the sun visor. Squeeze in. <laughs> um, his paws in the way. Here we go, here we go. That is one big schmoo coming along for the ride. Hey, Shmoo the cow has been in a Ferrari Pura Sangue. That's quite funny. If you saw that going down the road, you'd probably be a little bit, a little bit confused, a little bit perplexed by what was going on. I think he suits it. I think he suits it well. Perhaps slightly better. He fits in the back of it. Look, he's comfortable back there. Happy Shmoo the cow. Nice. Practical four wheel drive farm machine. Maybe not, maybe we'll keep this clean and tidy, but maybe he'll come along for the ride. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I want to show you how the seats fold down. So we're gonna work this out together because there is that storage area and I believe this comes out, that comes straight out. This can be stowed away in here, I think, can it? Yes, that fits in there perfectly, nice. Then with these buttons, you have the left side, I think a press of that, and the left seat starts going forwards. I press on the right side, and the right seat starts going forwards. Then this shelf pops out like that. Can that probably go in this storage area as well? I don't know, that might be a touch beyond me. I wouldn't be surprised if it can. I just don't know exactly how. Oh, look, it's actually shaped for it. I'm gonna lift this out for a second. This is actually shaped. I would need to work out exactly which way round it goes, um, but for sure, does that just go in there? Maybe it needs to be the other way up. Literally working this out as we go. Oh, yes, actually, it's like this. It's like this. That goes there. Yes, nice. Then that can go back on top of it. And you've got your flat boot floor, I think. Maybe there's a slight shuffle I need to do of that. And look at how much space there is. That's actually kind of amazing you could fit a lot of luggage in a Ferrari. And I thought the FF and Lusso were quite practical, but that's like, you could move house in this thing. You could fit something pretty big back here. Sounds to me like future Ikea trips in the Pura Sangue. Sounds like a plan. A moment later, and I've managed to get this in right, because that has to go that way. This has this magnetic part at the bottom, which you fold down, then it sits there. It's clearly shaped perfectly for that. And then this just goes on top. And then as you see, that all sits flush. The seats are back up now. So you could have it like this with even more exhaust sound through load as well. You could have the upper shelf in, but not the lower one or the back one, or to be honest, whichever combination you would like of the above. A practical Ferrari, who would ever have thought it? I've clearly got a lot to learn about this car as well as the 296 GTS, to be honest. And I suspect this is gonna be overtaking that car's mileage in about, 24 hours time because this is going to be like the winter daily right now. I've actually got a set of four Michelin Pilot Alpin winter tires and believe me 23 inch rear spare winter tires are ginormous but over here these are going to be going straight on in the coming days. It's 22 inch up front, 23 inch at the back but with the weather that's ahead and with the tours and plans that I have ahead Obviously, there are gonna be some big benefits of popping those onto the car. They are the official Ferrari winter tire set for this. Of course, you could buy a second set of wheels, but these are the lightweight forged wheels with the titanium bolts, the upgrade wheel, and I kinda of wanna keep them on regardless of which tires on it. So the plan is to do the swap at some point soon to get this ready, to get this ready to immediately, in about 10 days time, depart on an adventure with this car, using it as intended, driving it all across Europe. Big plans, big fun. But that's what it's for. Now, I haven't answered the full cost question, the exact price, so to speak, of this. To conclude, it is £387,500, including taxes, on the road, registered, good to go. It's a big thwack for a practical 
family SUV, but it's a Ferrari naturally aspirated 6.5 litre V12 with the most incredible interior in a completely bespoke specification. And no doubt the market price for this right now is definitely gonna be above what it cost. I have no intention of selling it for, I can see myself still owning this in five years, seven years time. Why, why would you change it until there's a replacement and successor? I had so much fun with the FF, the Lusso, and the second Lusso, and drove so many miles with them. And I mean, between those three cars, I think I must have done about 40, 50,000 miles of driving. So proving that this type of vehicle fits into exactly my purposes and the kind of plans that I have with it. So you're gonna come along for the journey with me as we experience and get familiar with it and do a ton of miles with it. Now, the other super exciting thing, of course, is that we have our new friend here at the Schmuseum, the very big Schmuber cow, along with the drop right now, of these. The Schmuel 150 mascot is available right at this moment in time. If they've sold out, no doubt there will be more again in the future, along with things like the air fresheners and of course the sticker sheets and plenty more. So keep your eyes on the Schmuel 150 shop over on eBay and grab yourself a Schmuel cow. I think they're really cool. I know so many of you guys do as well. We were so happy when we came up with the idea and brought that through to reality. So yeah, what an amazing day. What a whole lot of fun. What an awesome one it's been. A big thanks to Sam and the team over at Ferrari, HRO and Ferrari in Mayfair. Also the team at Hatfield as well. Yeah, super cool. The Pura Sangue adventure begins here. What we're gonna call it going forward, I'm sure it's just gonna become the Puro or something else rather than saying the full Pura Sangue every time, but we'll see how that evolves. For now, I hope you like the spec. I'm sorry that I kept it so secret in the build-up. I didn't have an opportunity to go and, in fact, the last time I saw one, a Puro at a dealership, was when I shot a video saying I was gonna be getting one because it's so early. It's come through so quickly and I just haven't had a chance really to see one and be able to share the spec until now until literally revealing it at the time of collection. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support so much. You have no idea. Without you, it wouldn't be possible. This is a dream. This is an absolute dream. I have to be honest. I, I can't quite take it in right now, but I'm excited. I'm very excited. So thanks again. And that's it for this time. I'll see you soon. Cheers.